viewers um it has been a while since i've uploaded another video so i really thought i must upload right now because you all were asking so much many questions about how am i doing and are you still alive and are you still in the hospice etc so i thought i'd give you an update and maybe tell you some other things in this video as well um and what I just don't understand of YouTube, when I watch other videos, they always have a, have a disclaimer at the start, but I don't know the rules about that. Do I need to make a disclaimer? Because then I always say I'm not a professional and we're talking about BMIs, etc. The trigger warning. Um, I don't know, but um, uh, for the people who don't know me, I am Angelique and I'm sharing um, uh, my life uh, at this moment and at this moment I'm in a hospice and they told me that I am uh, will, go to, will die in within three months that's why you go to a hospice and I am going to prove to myself and to you and to the rest of the world that I'm not going to die within the three months and that it's possible to recover even after 30 years having a severe eating disorder and all kinds of other disorders but according to the disclaimer I am a professional <laughs> I am a clinical psychologist and I am a, um, a, a scientific nutritionist so a nutritional scientist whatever you call it um, but I'm sharing here mainly from the inside out so the things I learn by heart and um, not only by knowledge even though I hope to share that with you as well. And about the update, it has been such a stressful week again. And that's why I didn't upload before because I'm exhausted and I just couldn't cope with all the feelings coming up and all the thoughts I had. Um, I have had uh, an intake in Amsterdam. I went there two days ago and I talked to a psychiatrist there who really wants to help me. And he's not a specialist in eating disorders and he's a specialist in something totally else uh, but he does lead a clinic for psychiatric disorders and uh, he does have some knowledge about eating disorders and it was a good conversation but also very confusing and I still don't know what's coming out of that but he's trying to find a place for me in a hospital in Amsterdam it's quite a big hospital uh, in the Netherlands and um, um, I'm not sure about if it's going to work out, how it's going to evolve. It's, it's just too much to put this all into this video. Uh, one of the things I think are very hard is that he works a lot with people who get forced treatment. And those are people who are, for example, uh, psychotic, uh, have schizophrenia, um, have all other kinds of problems that are not comparable to mine but he did suggest if I would be willing to, to assign something that they could force treat me if it would be necessary and at first my first reaction was of course not I mean I have an eating disorder I'm not psychotic I can think you know but there is an other side uh, about eating disorders is that um, sometimes I do think people get treated a little bit too um, too kindly and I don't mean that wrong because I think love changes everything and um, when you have uh, troubles you don't need to be forced to do something else but you need to be helped from the inside out and I really think that's also totally true for getting out of an eating disorder but there are points when you just need to uh, push through things to change something and um, it can be helpful to do that um, with a little harder push than just saying um, uh, please dear eat something you know um, and in this case I do think that it would help me if I would know for example that if I'm not able to have my own to eat my own meals or to have enough nutrients during the day um, that they can say okay it's either this or we must tube fed you feed you otherwise you will die and I don't want to die of course and um, when I would go to a hospital and they would I would go there through the refeeding process which is very dangerous medically 
and I can't do that here. Um, so um, it might be helpful to know that I really don't have a choice when I want to live. And if I would choose something else, then I will just die. But then it's my own choice. So it's something, it's, it's yeah, it's confusing. I don't know yet what to think about it. But at least they are willing to help me. There are lots of buts again. Um, I only have one week in hospice left. Next week I will have an appointment here. Um, also with my GP and with other people involved. And then they will have to decide if I can stay here for another six weeks. And I'm really scared about that as well. Um, also because I don't have the money yet. Um, about the GoFundMe, um, you can help me out. In the description box below you find a link and there's a link for the USA, for the UK and for the rest of Europe so you can can totally do it in your own valuta. Um, and I saw the least amount that you need to, to fund is five euros or dollars or, or um, pounds and I didn't know that I thought it was just one it was also okay but it is five but I see how many people are watching my videos. I mean, I have now I've gained 60,000 views or something from all the videos. So it must be manageable. And I still have one week left. So if you can afford five euros or dollar, and when they ask you more, just say no, 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 um, because you don't need to pay more than that. It's the minimum, it's just five. And I really hope we can get there. I need that. Uh, uh, ten thousand dollars or nine thousand euros or pounds to be able to stay another six weeks here and the doctor and a psychiatrist advised me that if there's a possibility I should stay here for the other six weeks and within that six weeks they hope to get me into the hospital and that's my biggest chance of surviving because they told me once again you are about to die and you can die every single moment so do whatever you can to stay alive here and moving out here would be immense stressful and I don't have another place to go anyway but I couldn't go home or whatever so I need to stay here and I need the funds to do so but okay that's not the most important thing um, I just shared with you if you are able to donate or find somebody else who can please do so but totally feel free and don't feel obliged because that's not a good thing, never. Um, um, what I also wanted to share today is about um, something I, I saw an investigation, or no, not an investigation, how do you say that? Um, a research, you call it in English, a scientific research. And it was about eating disorders, but it's also compatible to, th to other things than eating disorders. And I wanted to share it because it's something I learned and I think you may be, be helped by knowing this. Um, it was a research is only recently done um, in, in Australia and um, they found out that there, there are different kinds of uh, changing your habit and there are different parts in the brain that are involved in doing so. And according to eating disorders, um, some people are helped by just uh, telling them what to do and uh, go to the through the feelings and experience everything and talk about it and lots of therapy, etc., etc., and that will ha help them change. Um, their eating disorder, for example, or their depression, or um, OCD, or um, whatever you cope with. Addictions also. But there's also a group of people, and I think I am one of that, that are stuck in their behavior, and that the main problem isn't actually just the feelings and the traumas, etc. I have them, I have loads of them, but a big part of the problem is also that I am stuck in habit loops and I have just uh, evolved habits during my life and it gives me a, a, um, a feeling of control and of calmness when I stick to that habits and as soon as I let those habits go I'm stressed out 
and everything in me goes into defense and even offense and I want to 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 just go back to what I'm used to because that feels safe and of course those are feelings are involved and thoughts are involved but to change that for me it is not enough to just talk about my feelings and how horrible I find it to eat more or how hard I find it to enjoy my foods or whatever or don't want to eat when I don't feel like it etc etc I can I can dive in that till I'm dead literally um, but another way to cope with this is to to break the habit loop and one practical way to do that is to just go into the opposite action and just do it no matter what I feel no matter what I think just do it and there is a habit loop it starts somewhere you know there's a cue for example um, for me that can be I'm really stressed out I didn't sleep this night I don't feel any hunger cues and then uh, the, the habit I have is I don't want to eat and the result is I will lose weight or feel even more miserable but when I look at the cue I just let the cue be okay I'm stressed out I didn't sleep okay but I will change the behavior I will change I will make a new habit and a new habit will be for example it's um, uh, noon I am going to have my lunch right now no matter what if I feel comfortable or not if I'm hungry or not doesn't matter I'm just going to do that and the result will be eventually I will feel better and it will change something in my brains there's something that is called neuroplasticity and that means that your brains literally can change lots of problems we create ourselves during our lives not purposefully but we do that ourselves and I created my eating disorder I didn't do that on purpose I didn't do that willful I didn't want to but it happened due to circumstances due to traumas due to my my physics everything is has played a role in it a part in it but that doesn't matter I did create lots of habits um, which uh, contain or how do you say that which um, help strengthen my eating disorder so and I thought well I have an eating disorder it's it's partly in my genes and I have it already for 30 years so I can't ever change it that's not true it doesn't matter how long you cope with a problem with an addiction with a depression with all kinds of other things other stuff you might have problems with it doesn't matter your brain can change and really I want you to know that so it may give you hope because neuroplasticity means literally your brain is changing so when you put your brain into an MRI scan you will see that things will will get into another order there are other roots in your brains created and uh, old roots can can die and that is the beauty of, of, of our body it's so amazingly made and it really gives me hope as well because when I am just sticking to uh, create another habit it is possible that my old habit will just disappear and then I will be for example be able to have my lunch no matter what I think or what I feel and take good care of myself if that is going to be my new habit and you can can do that with anything when you are used to when you come home from your work and you're used to to always get a beer or your wine or whatever and maybe you you get um, um, drunk afterwards that first drink can be a habit you can change that if you are used to go to the vending machine uh, when you are bored at your work on a certain time or something and always have the chocolate bars there even though you actually don't want to you can change that habit and for example do something else and um, couple a reward on that something else and then change the habit loop um, and your brain will change so when you just stick to that new habit the old habit will disappear and of course that will need some discipline but yeah it is changeable and I just wanted to share that because for me that's something that helps me to know that it doesn't matter that I have this already for 30 years I can change 
and that means I can survive and I can stay alive. One thing I wanted to share with you again is that uh, a text, it's in Dutch again, and now I know, because I read that in the comments, that when I look at this right now into my camera, it's uh, backwards, so I can't read it, but you can when you watch it, so now I know that. I will first read it in Dutch just for fun, because most of you don't speak Dutch, and then you can just... Um, uh, hear the sound of the Dutch uh, version and I think it's abracadabra for you, but I thought it would be fun to do so. In Dutch, oké. Okay. Praten over onze, onze problemen is onze grootste verslaving. Doorbreek die gewoonte. Praat over je vreugdes. <laughs> I, I'm really already laughing about what you hear now because I think you didn't understand anything about it. But I will translate it for you into English. It says, talking about our problems is our biggest addiction. Um, break through that habit and instead talk about your joys. And of course, I love this because, you know, when I go to YouTube and I watch videos from other people, it's so often about, oh, it's such a hard life and um, or it's just fake. Everything is wonderful and perfect and everybody is happy and everybody is so beautiful and enjoying their lives, etc. And then that's fake and I, I, I can't stand that anyway. Um, but also when people talk to each other and share their lives, it's always also very often about focusing on the negative and what we miss and the lacks we have in our lives. and. Maybe even more when you talk to yourself, when you're alone, when I'm alone and I'm a little sad, oh my goodness, I can talk myself down into the bottom and even low, be, below that, you know, because then I, I figure out all the things that were negative in my life, everything I'm lacking here, I can't walk, I am so sick and I can't go out whenever I want, I can't drive a car anymore and um, maybe I will die and I can't do anything with my career and I don't have a husband and I don't have children and I can't go on a holiday and the weather is so beautiful. My goodness, everybody would get depressed of focusing on that. I would go mad here if I would do that, you know? So what I do now, right now, and of course it's hard, I know that, I don't know that, but focus on what you do have. Focus on your joys in life, even if they are so small. You know, what I tend to do right now, I will show you. I'm in a wheelchair. Everybody knows I want to walk. That's one of my biggest short-term goals. I want to walk. But I can't yet. So, what can I do? Well, I can just sit here in my wheelchair and feel miserable. Or I can just... Oops! <laughs> in my wheelchair once in a while and of course it's a little stupid but sometimes it can just make me happy because I think well I have a wheelchair I can still go around and maybe I can't dance really but um, that little bit is already something oh and something else that does make me happy and I'm a little stubborn in this because my doctors told me I'm not allowed to walk I'm not allowed to do any exercises because it all costs energy and it's bad for you but let me tell you a secret and nobody can know here but I'm already practicing to get out of my wheelchair and I can even put up my legs a little and I have been practicing now every single day and I do that secretly because I'm not allowed to do anything that will postpone my life or will make me stronger but I think when I keep eating well, and when I can get weight, or at least stay at the same weight I am at right now, I'm just going to do that. And it gives me hope, because you know, I just stood up, and okay, it didn't really hurt when I do it a little longer, it does hurt, so I shouldn't do that, but it gives me hope that I will be able to walk again, and I want that so, so, so badly. Um, and one last thing, and then I'm going to close this video because it's already going, getting far too long, is one question I always ask myself almost every single day, and I want you 
to ask yourself this question also. If this would be your last day, how would you spend that day? What would you do? What would you look at? Who do you want to meet? Who do you want to talk to? How do you want to feel? What would you do for yourself? What would you like to eat? What would you like to drink? What activity would you do? If this single day, right now, today, doesn't matter if it's morning, afternoon, night, just think about it at this moment. If this would be the last day for you on this earth, on this planet, what would you do? And everything that comes up to you, which is possible to do right now, today, do it! Please do it! So for me, it helps me, for example, to enjoy things much, much more and to make plans um, for today that I wouldn't have done when I would have thought, oh, maybe I have still a few weeks to live, so why would I do it today? No. Everything you would enjoy, you would like to give, you would like to receive, everything that is possible, do it today. Because you live in the now. You don't live in the future, you don't live in the past. Don't let that mess up today and this very moment. Because all that counts is this very moment. You are alive at this moment. Doesn't matter. It, all the troubles you have, all the circumstances, doesn't matter. Today you live, this moment you are here, so please take out everything you can of that very moment. Okay, I have to quit because otherwise this video is going to be far too long again. Um, once a reminder, if you can donate five dollar or a pound or euros, please look at the description box below and click on the link from GoFundMe. Say no, no, no to all the other questions, so it's just sticking to the five. And then um, we must be able, when everybody who watches this video is doing that, I can stay here for another six weeks. And I really, really want to. And to keep sharing and to keep staying alive and to find the help to go to that hospital within six or seven weeks. And it would be so amazing. But um, we'll see. I will pray for it. I will keep trusting, keep having faith. And I would love to read your comments again because it's so helpful to me. And I really hope that you are getting something out of these videos as well. Okay, dears, love to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.